Hello and welcome everybody to LCS Challengers League presented by Subway. We are getting into the tail end of the spring split. I'm happy to start off the weekend. I'm Kangas joined by Cubby. How's it going, Cubby? Doing great, man. Happy Friday. We get some bonus Challengers League action before LCS kicks back off tomorrow. And we get both leagues running together as they should. We're excited to give our mm -hmm. Challengers boys their opportunity to make some space uh, between uh, themselves and the rest of the standings or just themselves and being relegated today in our two matches. Yeah, there's a lot of implications for that because we're in week yeah. seven. This is the, pretty much the end of the split. We get one more week next weekend where teams can really solidify what those standings are going to look like. But let's take a look at them right now to see where we currently stand as we're entering week seven. Because like you said, there's there, there's a lot of room to move for the teams at the bottom. Some of the teams at the top are getting solidified, though. Shoutouts to FlyQuest, Maryville, and Supernova, who have all locked in at least a playoff spot. Seeding is yet to be determined, but they are going to be in playoffs. Yeah, and I, I mean, looking at the standings right now, Kangas, uh, especially our first match of the day, it is Supernova versus Fear, but a good opportunity for Supernova to make some space between themselves and the rest of the standings is... At the moment, it's pretty clear that looking at the standings, they're a top three team, especially when you take into context that only Maryville and Supernova and FlyQuest have lost to each other. FlyQuest still undefeated. They beat Maryville. Yeah. Maryville beat Supernova. And those are the only two losses that you see on your screen for the top three. So if Supernova can continue that trend, that for me would really solidify them as, you know, one of those top squads. And their last match of the year is against FlyQuest week eight. So still a chance to actually fight for first. So a lot on the line for Supernova True. today. But in front of them today on the schedule is Cincinnati Fear. Yeah. And that one's going to be important because you can see third and fourth. Let's take a look at the schedule for the day because they're kicking things off. Uh, it's not going to be possible for Fear to catch up to them in this series, but it's a big one for Fear if they can get this win, solidify themselves going into playoffs. But for Supernova, I think more weight on them, like you had said. They really want to prove that they can compete, maybe take that series off of FlyQuest, give us a three-way tie at the top. But then we end the day with DSG versus Mirage. Oh boy, that one has a big implications because both those teams are currently sitting in the position of facing the uh, promotion tournament. But we're ready to talk about the first series, so let's get back into that one. Looking at the first team, Supernova. This is the team, Cubby, that a lot of people are looking at as even if they're not in top two yet, they should be in the conversation. I mean, for me, this is the third best team in the league, right? And they are a top three team. I, I've been grouped up there. I think Supernova has been looking pretty sound. And some of the games they've dropped, you know, this is a team that will play aggressive early. If they miss a play or two, sometimes the comp just doesn't work out. We've seen that from Supernova, and that's okay. Uh, I, I really like how this team does play forward, plays aggressive, and especially of late, man, I really feel like Kenvy started to step into his own, playing those fighters and those brawlers again. I saw the Kenvy Lee Sin pop off. I missed that greatly <laughs> in Challengers League. Uh, so it yeah. really feels like this roster is getting comfortable. And let's look at their opposition, Cincinnati Fear on the other side of the rift. They started off pretty strong. They're on a bit of a slump on a two-series uh, slide oh, here. No more five uh, but, Grim Reapers. We, we had oh, to change yeah, it. I just realized that. We lost the five Grim oh. Reaper uh, graphic. I oh, mean, man. only the rookies now are the Grim Reapers. You know, the ones coming from death. <laughs> that's, that's good. True. We'll talk about them more as we get into the draft here. Um, but uh, I, I'm happy you highlight the rookies because they're the ones that we've kept our eyes on for most of the split. Toasty in particular uh, is somebody that we were really excited about. And yeah. I know that we were talking a little bit before the stream was going live here. How would you say Toasty's been performing compared to expectation for the rookie? Toasty, uh, for me, was one of, if not the most exciting rookies coming into Challengers League this split. And I, I think that Toasty has just been okay, right? Uh, and I, I kind of have like more perspective to share on this as we go. I, I think that he's had some good and bad moments uh, as a rook. And for me, it, it hasn't been like, oh, wow, you know, he's a top mid in the league. Yeah. Like, this guy's crazy impressive. It's just kind of like, you know, can he start to make that claim, right? Because it really feels like he is middle, if not lower side of the pack at the moment. Yeah, I think it's cool to see that he is at least still being talked about i mean it's not like his performance has been uh so bad that we're not still hyping him up and we actually got a chance to chat with him about his thoughts on the opposition so let's actually hear from the the man himself a more friend like in person or like not in person but like more hands-on experience like i've been talking to shochi a lot mm -hmm. and i think like in nacl he's always been like a really strong laner and he's always like managed to find these carry performances which like I'm like not really known for, but like, I mean, I talked to Shochi a lot this off season and like talked to him about like matchups and like, he's just like there, like if I need the help, you know? So, I mean, 
he's he's like a really funny nice guy yeah and like it's like nice to have him like like as like a friend to talk to especially about because like he's like kind of had that experience and he's been around for a bit too I love how we hear your voice uh, responding yeah. to him there. You got to work on muting yourself when you're recording the. Nah, uh, don't. I, I, you know, it eggs them on a little bit. You know, it's okay, a conversation. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, <laughs> and it was kind of fun. You know, like talking with. Uh, I caught up with both Toasty and Shochi before this. And it's interesting because you know, like we were kind of talking about Toasty Split. Like, ah, you know, like it hasn't really been like, where we want it to be. Like, it just doesn't feel like you know it's like the wow factor rookie split that we were really kind of potentially hoping for with Toasty, but. You know, talking with Shochi, he's like, you know, one of the areas I've helped Toasty in is just making sure he doesn't fall into the same pitfalls that I did when I was on IMTOE and, like, getting my start. And he's like, you know, by that perspective, I feel like he's actually doing better than I was in my rookie year and at a higher level. And, I mean, I, I appreciate the perspective there from Shochi, right? Because we did have some big expectations for Toasty. And it, it's not like he's failing expectations at all, right? It's just, like, not quite the promise like we were really hoping for, right? It's like that mm -hmm. explosive first split in first year, which... I mean, he still has plenty of time to make that claim for himself as we move into matches that are more and more important later in the season. So hopefully we can see Toasty continue to scale and uh, put up some really big performances moving forward. And it's still regular season. Like you said, there's still opportunity yeah. this split, but even going into playoffs here, because if they win this series, and then depending on how the DSG Mirage series goes later on, we could end the day with Supernova locking in at least a playoff spot too. It'd be there, possible there are, for them Supernova's to get knocked out of in. top eight. Yeah, Supernova is locked in a playoff spot. If Fear wins, four is the magic number right now. If you get the four, you're yes. in. Yeah. If you get four, uh, depending on how, again, technically Mirage could still make it, or DSG could still make it in with, with four wins. So depending on how things shake out there. But let's catch up on, on how things are happening right now on the screen in front of us, because we have some picks and bans to talk about now as we're getting ready for game number one. It seems like a lot of mid lane and AD carry focus for both bands. So we're going to lock early AD carries with Senna and Callista. Yeah, also, I think important to note that Talia ban now a flex ban for both Shochi and Kenby. Kenby put up a really good Talia True. game last week. Uh, but at the moment, just a lot of lockdown. Callista Nautilus in the center. Gotta say, this is something where you can neutralize that lane. Uh, the Nought pick is a little bit of a deny from the Senna, as we have seen that Senna Nought get really popular. We are on the newest mm -hmm. patch. Uh, support item was nerfed last patch in terms of grabbing it late, because the Double Doran Senna Nought was really what's been dominating LCK. Uh, so mm -hmm. more of the traditional uh, Senna Kench now coming out. And a Rumble for Faisal. His Rumble's been really good this split. He's willing to blind it. I like this pick a lot against Philip. Philip going to feel pressure now to take his Aatrox, or else he might not be able to get it in the second phase of draft. So, Fear, I have some choices to make here. It's still a bold move to blind pick when you're up against Philip. He's been having a great split so far. But also, I mean, we're talking about Shochi and the history between him and Toasty. Shochi's against his old org as well. So he's kind of yeah. helping coach Toasty to play for the org that uh, Shochi was playing for. Faisal's also going up against that org because Faisal and Shochi were the solo laners for Fear in the I, year I past. Mean, a lot of things that like you know we just have ties between these teams because not only yeah. is it faisal's old org but he also replaced philip to go there uh because philip True. was playing top lane for FlyQuest cha uh, challengers in the spring uh so that's kind of fun uh also fun facts some deep lore henby versus chad part of the roommates war as we had mm -hmm. the trio of junglers uh in challengers league henby chad and shaden at one point were all roommates so uh, we saw, you know, part of the roommate war the other week. We get another part of it this week uh, with, with Kenby versus Chad now. Should always, uh, you know, be fun as always, I should say, between these mm -hmm. two as Chad loves the aggression. And Kenby, I got to say, has really started to flex his muscles and look a little bit more comfortable and confident. He's been uh, put on a few more carries in the last couple of weeks, whereas early on in the split, he was kind of playing the poppies, the trundles, more supportive champions. And Kenby on carries at this level has always paid off. You know, it's been pretty yeah. good. And I mean, these two have so much history as junglers as well. Uh, Chad notably, you know, stepping in for Ken V back on the 100 yeah. Thieves Academy roster, you know, getting his Proving Grounds championship there. So cool to see the history between some of these players. Uh, well, junglers haven't been locked in yet, though. So we're actually seeing a few bands for that in the second rotation here. The Vise band away, Tristana and the Cassante. The Huey has been locked in for Toasty. We haven't talked about that yet. Toasty on Huey. What do we think about the strengths of Toasty so far? And does Huey fit the strengths that the player has been showing. You know, I, I do think that Toasty, like his biggest plus has been really, he will look and find engages, right? Uh, and I think some of those have been really good, some not so much. He already has one Hui game under his belt. It was a loss, but Hui I think is a really strong champ right now. Uh, especially if you're able to poke out mids. Now it's going to be able to be counterpicked 
by Shoshi. The Tristana, a Shoshi special, mm -hmm. was denied. Curious if he goes uh, with something like the TF, which actually gets denied Ooh. pick here. So Phil Philip TF top? ADTF. Uh, it's decent tech into this Rumble, because Rumble is not able to side lane against TF at all yeah. uh, when it goes AD. And also with uh, TF, you can go Swifties and kind of not get caught by the Harpoons, so you can't get burned down between mm -hmm. that and the gold cards. So I like the tech Even the Equalizer slow is not as bad, yeah. Yeah, so LB is going to be the answer to side lane. So if, if that is the case, but now or Syndra... It's not it's no side laning power now for Supernova. So Fear have the ability Ooh. as we get into the later stages of the game to really use TF to stretch them out. Yeah, the TF can really make work uh, in the side lanes, but the Syndra does offer a lot of burst damage. Yeah. So I'm wondering if maybe the plan is like if they have to answer TF with the Syndra there, but look at the damage that they're packing between Syndra and Rumble. Lee Sin could add a little bit more. Like the team fight of Supernova is really looking uh, intimidating for fear right now so let's see what their answer is going to be oh voldevere got omega buff this patch yeah that's an insta lock from chad okay holy's really strong this patch so a point and quick stun some front line which i think is much needed and yeah. uh, again now you really get tower dives opened up with the voldevere uh if you are looking to pressure Ooh. early on your first two clears are so powerful your level six is really good uh the the buffs to voldy like in particular your W, I think, cooldown was flattened. Either that or the mana cost. So it's just a purely a Q max now, and they gave Voldy more speed. So that bear, mm -hmm. he was hitting the gym a little bit uh, in, in the patch <laughs> notes, you know? He's getting buffer. Yeah, he, was getting, he got uh, nice and buff. Yeah, nice buffs coming in. I, I'm happy you talk about the dive. As soon as you said that, I was like, this is yeah. Callista Nautilus. I mean, with a volley bear on top of that, that is a terrifying I mean, dive. Going Tom top Ultimate... two, Rumble's very oh, vulnerable true? to dive. So if you can attack that and get that behind... This is very much a team fight comp for Supernova. They want to have Syndra reset the fights and play off Rumble there. So, kind of catch the engage and reset. I think if Fear are able to get some dives off, they can maybe overwhelm that in the mid game. It could be really big. Well, unique take out of draft here yeah. from Cincinnati Fear. My Twisted patch, Fate baby. top lane. The new Volley Bear change is locked in for Chad. Expect action from the red side of the rift as we are loaded in to game number one. All right, first learning we have of this game, Kangas. It is going to be the Flash plus Ghost for Philip in the top lane. That is expected, but to me, that's a giveaway that we're going to see Chad work his way up top. So, sure. curious if we see Chad go for, like, a Raptor start into reverse clear, or if he goes Wolves to top, because uh, you can go uh, Wolves, take your bot side, then work his way up there, and see if you're using their level 1 that is very threatening with the Nautilus and TF to at least scout, but they get no wards down. So Supernova will be happy with that start. Yeah, I do like that they're looking for it. Uh, it's always a mark of how comfortable a team is with the composition if they're willing to just go for that type of play. Even if you don't find anything, I mean, who knows? May maybe somebody is there and you're able to pull it off. But it looks like so far, community sentiment is also behind Fear right now, despite Supernova being the higher seeded team, being ahead in the standings. Fear holding 63% of the Twitch votes. Spam SN if you believe in Supernova. Spam FEAR if you believe in Fear. As we have another slightly delayed invade. Array's got to be careful here. Gets hit by the dredge line. The crash comes down from Shed. They're not going to fully commit onto it with Diamond playing goalie, but do Fear get their ward down this? Oh, they're, they're just committing. Yeah. They're going to push Kenby out of the jungle. This is a bit goofy as I don't know if Chad can fully commit to this. Uh, yeah, the the Senna to... Kench, I mean, Tom Kench is so strong level one if he's here. So I think they're just going to try and make sure that Chad can't get in range. And that will be the camp going over to Kenby. That hurts. Ooh, well, uh, it looks fun to begin for fear. And we see that the community vote after witnessing that have uh, given a little more faith into Supernova now. As Kenby does get that first camp, Chad's going to have to walk all the way back over to the Wolves. So very delayed for the Volley Bear. Yeah, I, I think the word you use, goofy. That is uh, the best yeah. way to describe that play. So it, it will be, you know, Wolves start and going Wolves to top. I, I It's funny, when Voldebear was actually meta, there was a meta where it was very much Voldy, Hecarim, and Udyr. Chad and Armeo started uh, Wolves a lot. And Ar I consider Armeo the best Voldebear player that we have uh, in the ecosystem. I, I think that he's oh. ridiculously good on that champion. Uh, so it's kind of fun to see him return to that as it enables you to do level two and you could have, at least in the old patch, kind of where they changed aggro and grouped camps together. Some deep lore for, for the Chad, Voldebear, him and Armeo kind of responsible for that start. Good one. But you still feel Armeo. So is this Chad's opportunity? I mean, I don't see Armeo playing Volibear. <laughs> I mean, who knows? No, Ar Armeo's Voldy is way too good, man. That, that guy's played <laughs> way too much Voldebear throughout his career. It's too good. 
Uh, Chad's right, gonna have to well. do some work to catch up, but uh, I mean, at the moment he's got to catch up in this game. Yeah, isn't spotted on his rotation up to the top camps. Should not have been seen there in the fog of war. And he's just looping around. Is he going to go for another invade on Kenby? Can be one camp behind. Kenby jumps over, and there's a bear waiting in the bush. Kenby jumps to the ward, gets away from the lightning crash down, and is fine. That's the power of the Volibear, Bear, though. You can see he instantly procs BTA, and even without having a red buff, he can still force Kenby off. Of course, didn't have access to Sonic Wave. Kenby after he has Warren hop out, will sack the crab. And it's a slowed down game plan for Fear, given how the level one went, but still, you, you can kind of see the power of the Voldy in this comp. And also, it's very scary for Faisal right now, because his wave was bounced by TF, so uh, this wave is pushing out, and he's going to have to be wary of a potential Voldemort revisit up top, as his wave will uh, crash into the turret slowly. Bill did take a pretty rough trade there, so it's actually lower in health, but... Yeah, based on where Kenby's going, I don't know if that's going to impact too much. Uh, I do want to touch on the fact this is, again, a fearless draft. Oh, never mind. We'll get back to that. Kenby's looking for an invade. Has a level up on Chad, so he just tries to contest at the Raptors. Tosi cannot help out because of how low he's been put by Shochi. So Kenby just trying to put Chad a little bit further behind. But I wanted to touch on the fact fearless draft. We're expecting more unique picks. I believe this is the first Volibear pick yeah. of the split. And we had 102 unique champions going into the day. So, oh boy. Make it 100 Thief. Does Toasty survive this one? Oh, flashes the Sonic Wave. Shochi doesn't hit Side the initial step. Q. Good turret damage. Can be flashes forward. He's going to get outplayed here. First blood, oh. but traded. And oh, Shochi barely lives. One more auto, he was down. That was decently well managed from Toasty and really aggressive from Kenby. I thought that Kenby like, could have maybe looked top uh, and taken the 2v2 for the Krugs as he had Rumble crashing, but not the case. And now. Rumble kind of forced to overextend. You know, it, whenever you, you proc that flame spitter, you're going to push the wave. I still playing very far back now. Does Feisty stops Chad's base, so Chad's set behind even further again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, props to Toasty. Uh, this is a lot of pressure as we hop into the replay. Now, I think he manages pretty this? well. Um, I, I mean, he's getting poked out. He's low in this lane, but this flash is good, and then the sidestep on the Q from Shochi is actually really good. Shochi should not have went for that auto. That's what got him under threat, so Kenby's going to flash yeah. commit and trade out. Let's pick it up. But I mean, yeah, Shochi taking that tower shot. It was almost a two-for-one in favor of Toasty. If Shochi hits the scatter of the week, there's a chance that Kenby gets the kill with a resonating strike initially and then just uh, backs off, but I, I don't think that that was going to... Yeah. I mean, the fact that it didn't land then meant that uh, Kenby has to stick around under the turf for a little longer does go down, but on the you know, respawn goes right for the grubs and will at least pick up three of those, so the first neutral objective has been picked up. Chad is trading for the dragon right now, and I don't see Supernova really getting in there, although Kenby is nearby. This is good for fear. If you're going to pick a Volibear and a Quist Nautilus lane, getting dragons on time it is gonna matter also while we were in the replay important to note kenvy did pick up three grubs for supernovas so the next spawn mm -hmm. is gonna be important for fear to try and contest at the moment toasty's down a flash would be pressured took a lot of damage right there sidesteps can be toasty oh, getting the damage on the shochi while dodging the abilities of kenvy and pretty impressive stuff so far i mean we went into this looking at the rookie mid laner saying he hasn't had a breakout split but so far a good start to this game i really like the start though that kenvy's had overall i know he died on the dive but i think that defending that camp level ones really set chad behind and again, Voldy, like a lot of your power as Voldy is the first couple of players that you have as your your base stats, your numbers are, are just, they're so good early on. And when you're behind like this, I mean, it's nearly a three camp deficit for Chad. Mm -hmm. uh, already a level. Can be picking up the first set of grubs really big for jungle experience. It's kind of tough for Chad to you know, make that big impact on the map where Voldy is able to you know, pull off turret dives, able to really push people off waves or convert kills. Uh, Chad at the moment is kind of behind the pace. Kenby's going to beat him the plays, and if Kenby does beat him the play, then Chad's behind, as it is match clear. Yeah. So both junglers working their way up top. And it's even more surprising, given the facts that Kenby died under that mid turret, that Chad has fallen this far behind in the clear. So we'll see if he's able to catch up. He is passing oh, towards is... that top half, as you said, but Kenby's actually heading yeah. bot side right kinda now. Kind of clever from Kenby. So because of the level one and how that went, Kenby was able to cycle out his red buff first. So Chad is cycling out the AoE cans, which he, you know, ended up cycling first, but his delayed double one on the top side. 
the blue buff was late. He did this last, and Kenvi was already ahead, so he's able to take his buff, sneak over to the enemy buff, and now he will be spotted, he's but spotted. the fear bot lane, we're not seeing yeah. this coming. He's level 6, Aption does not have ultimate available, so he is the target! Good execution, but Fate's Call from Lens will save the support. Dabshin gets out of there. I heard the kick. I didn't see it. I, I think that Lens ended up flashing away. Uh, just got sent. Am, am I correct in that, Kangas? I, I think that yeah. what happened is Diamond might have gotten a stun, or maybe the root from Ray hit while the, the kick was going out. Yeah, so something funky. happened during that. that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm just like old or if it's his first game in the morning and I'm not able to pick it up. You know, it's uh, not, not, not like me, Kangas. Goofy interactions, <laughs> getting by. Uh, that said, we are going to try and get some power in the top side of the map, as can be just tried for a play bot. Uh, good on Fear's bot lane uh, to at least hold tight there. I think only burning once flash. I mean, that is expensive, but uh, given the angle, and I think how can be kind of snuck in there, I, that's pretty worth it. Well, uh, as you're having your coffee to get waking up. I want Chad to have some coffee as well, because so far it's been Kenvi active on the map, and Chad on the Volley Bear has not been making too much work. Now going for an invade onto Kenvi. Okay. You got it. Smites away the blue buff, gives the thumbs up. Okay, that's something. But still, we haven't seen a dive. We haven't seen really any ganks coming through from Chad. It has been way more action from Kenvi's side when we really set up the Volley Bear to be this big threat. That's Chad. Need to find some here. Yeah, I, I think he's just waiting for draw. Oh, okay. Here flash over the wall from Dabshin. They're on to Shoshi. Ultimate lands. Toasty's got the damage. Lockdown wow. from Nautilus. Toasty picks up the kill. Well played. The the hover from Shoshi oh, was on. We're getting lens too. Other side of the map. Okay. Lens, okay. Well, I guess he's left all alone in the bot lane in a one v two array. The ultimate goes a little wide. Oh, Fence. lands with the outplay. Can he kite away from Diamond? I think he can. It's hard to lock down the Callista. Lens. Tom Kench can't do it. Lens with a massive 1v2 outplay. Now Kenby's in trouble up here as a 3v2 is broken out by the Grubs. Chad wins that one. Philip gets the kill. And these are going to be all three of these Grubs going up for free. Actually, just two of them. It looks like one was picked up by Kenby. But notably, the five stack and the six stack was denied. Good for Lens, and Lens man. I, I think Lens and yeah. Daption have actually, like, Hi, Key. I mean, we've been talking about this Fear Squad, and we were excited about Toasty, but watching this team, it's like, hey, fill up Lens, Daption, like, these are the guys that are actually really performing on the squad. And I think Lens continues to have a really nice split, finds a 1v2 in the bot lane against Array in time, and a bot lane held in high regard here in Challengers League. We'd love to get a second look at that, how he was able to make that one work. As the Sentinel just wasn't cast in combo with any CC. Yeah. So, I mean, all the shadow goes yeah. completely wide. It, oh, it, it's so hard to lock down the Callista. I mean, be able it, it to is. dash around. But, like, Array and Diamond could have played this much better in the sense that, like, when Callista is in the air, you should land the W. And then you can time the, the, the Tom Kench spit out to hit the Senna ult as well to guarantee the damage. Yeah. So, uh, both those guaranteed, like, combos Ooh. just not found by the Supernova bot lane. It enables them to flash. jump around. Look could die here. Yeah, flash forward. Flame Spitter's there. Ooh. Final Harpoon. Faisal gets a solo kill. Nice from Faisal as Philip gets schmelted down in the top side by the Rumble. Faisal continuing to prove that, I mean, his Rumble's really good. He's one of the few Rumbles I've seen in Challengers that was actually up in the Udyr oh. matchup. Oh. Chad not quite able to buffer his way out of that one. Yeah. He, he stepped out of the brush and then tried to yeah. go back in. That was a little misplay right there. He still has not really found a gank to happen. Okay, the action has picked up. It was a slightly slower early game than I expected, mm -hmm. but we are seeing a lot of fights. It's still just not around the volley bear like I had anticipated. Like, this, this bear actually has not been that big of a difference maker outside of just stacking these dragons. And I suppose yeah. the fight around the Grub, that was pretty important. I mean, he was set behind early. That Grub fight is nice for Fear. They were able to secure two, which prevents the, you know, extra Grub might spawning, crashing their way into these turrets later into the game. Shadow will be able to psych out his, out his camps here, so it's not a doomsday scenario for the bear, but yeah, the bear uh, definitely is a pick that's supposed to, you know, make sure that Lee gets behind, and if Lee has no damage, he's not really worth too much. Mm -hmm. uh, Lee's ahead, and it's Kenby's Lee at that, too. So we, we saw him yep. die in the Grub fight, but we've seen Kenby do some damn good things on this pick uh, throughout taking it, and we'll see if he can step up with Supernova, who... I mean, have some scaling elements uh, as we go through this game. I'm just concerned about the side lane situation, because Philip mm. can really pressure sides against Rumble Syndra, and it's something where Chad can have an impact later into the game, really punishing those sides, you know, disabling the turrets, and just being that big boulder bear to help uh, you know, tank the damage the TF will be backing up. I still will say I like the 
straight up brute force team fight a little bit more from Supernova just because okay. of what yeah. the Senna can give. I you. love the sustain. Yeah. But Toasty does kind of throw a wrench in that 2 1 and 1 mm -hmm. on the Huey. Huey's also great at those front the banks as can be spotted here Shochi as well there's nobody actually to die philip went for the reset so supernova just hovering but what, what what do you think about as the game continues on once we approach the barons the elder dragons those bigger fights who do you have favored here i mean i, I think you're right kangas like the the rumble cindera comp it's pretty straightforward in terms of how you can fight so i i, I think in the straight up 5v5 if supernova is able to connect i, I would favor their comp I just, I think that fear can really stretch and control the map with the TF. And I think that's going to be the big, mm. real big difference is making sure that hey, they're going to force Rumble and Center to show on sides and they can go for power plays, right? Or if sure. they, they pick a side up too high, you can TF port on them and make plays. Because the DPS from AD TF is just, it's it's pretty crazy. So it's it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see if Phillip's able to, you know, continue to punch that. I know that it, it you know, has seen some, some changes. I, it's still strong. And you still get a ton of map control. Mm. In an interesting way, I mean, with Kraken Slayer, it's actually going to be some pretty good true damage for the Tom Kench front line that Supernova are packing as well, because they don't have as much pure yeah. engage on Supernova's side. You can use the Tom Kench Shelby, you can use Scatter the Weak or Dragon's Rage, but it's a way higher bar of execution. It's not as simple as just Nautilus press Q <laughs> or Folly yeah. Bear run at them yeah, you, uh, and you, press you Q. You don't get so, the true yeah. damage anymore, but the physical damage does scale off the max health, oh, which sure, Supernova sure. will have some of uh, for sure in that front line, so... Either way, Philip's gonna feel really nice. Doesn't have really have to care about the wave first too much. As Rumble, you can see at this point, Faisal was ahead. He did net a really nice solo kill, but uh, he is forced to catch these waves now. Catching that one is Kenby is actually on the Herald, so the next objective. Chad's on the other side of the map here. If Shochi walks up, oh, Chad actually walks away. Shochi was prepared though, actually scouting out where enemy <laughs> jungler might be. So props to Shochi here, playing very safe. I mean, he has to, right? His jungler is taking the rift right now, and Phillip's not showing top. So I, I, I think Shochi, you know, playing aware with the map. We'd like to see that. Sometimes Shochi falls victim to overextending on sides himself. So seeing the discipline here from Shochi, he does drop the turret, but Rift Herald will be really just, you know, you're, you're, you know, it's an investment, right? You take the Herald now, yeah. and you, you want a turret later. But I dig the turret. I mean, I, I think it's fantastic that yeah. Toasty's able to get that. Capital I'm actually gains surprised now, at Supernova. You know? We like that. Yeah, you get the guaranteed gold rather than the Herald, which could be gold. But Faisal is still getting a lot of work done to that top turret, too. So it's not all uh, doom for Supernova here. Not like they're falling too far behind. There is a gold lead for Fear as of now, though. One and a half thousand just about. So they are slowly getting that lead. Yeah. Oh, mid lane's actually pretty substantial. You know what I find funny about this and game, not. potentially? Uh, Kangas. No, but I'd love to hear. Uh, you know, we, we could have a, a situation where, um, you know, we've already had Lens and Daption prove that they can play Lucian Milio, which was terrible in LCS. Yeah. And now, you know, we could have them prove they can play the Callista Nautilus, which Callista is terrible in this league and LCS. <laughs> I, I think the last time I checked, Callista was at a 17%. When, it's 29 right now. It's 6 and 15. So okay. if you can prove you get the Callista pass, I mean, that's... Callista and Lucian, that's pretty big for Lens. Envy's walking right in. Daption actually tries to engage into the fight rather than peeling back onto the jungle, and oh, it's, it's working. Split. Diamond's taking a lot of damage from Toasty, and Lens goes down. They get Kenby as well. Fear strike on two fronts and win on both sides. Well played. As Fear, they were able to split up Supernova. Both cores retreated on their own. Fear simply just had the numbers in DPS. They're able to get a kill, and that, guess what? That's the third Drake of the game, too, as the stacking continues yeah. at a really good timer. They've done this really quickly. Incredible stuff from Cincinnati. Fear, a big part of that being the Faisal was not in the fight, so they had five members. Yeah. Supernova only had four, and let's take another look at the engage. And engage from Daption's really sound. Also, where they took it, Shochi can't walk through that. So Shochi is forced to split up. Can be forced to split up. Fear, take the initiative. I love that take from Daption. I feel like that's... Two really good takes we've seen from Daption in the mid lane. The first one got a kill on the Shochi. There, that, that's a really big play, making sure they can at least get some damage into that mid outer, but more importantly, secure the soul point. Out in soul, very strong soul at that, too. Uh, so I like the team's focus playing around Toasty, too. We were talking yeah. about him being a little fed. You know, he's participated in five of the six kills from the game team from overall. So far. Yeah. It's uh, looking like he could be the carry that Fear needs in this game. Because a reminder for the context here, Supernova, if they win this series, they're going to be punching their way up to stay in that conversation for top two. 
They'll be tied with Maryville even if they drop the series, but they have a final series against FlyQuest Challengers. That's a big one for them to win as well. But first they got to topple Fear as Faisal's looking to make quick work of Philip gets Flash out of the Twisted Fate. But expectation was a little higher for Supernova going into this one. It's only game one. They have a chance to bounce back, and they still have a chance in this game. But fantastic showing so far from Cincinnati Fear. I mean, it sounds like you could be setting up the Fear Game 3 already. You know, Fear, they, they love their Game 3s, right? If they win Game you know, 1, that's a good point. you're favoring Supernova, Kangas. We're getting ahead <laughs> of the Game 3 narrative, you know? Exactly, exactly. And Fear have actually bucked that trend. I believe they have an 0-2. Yeah, they did. Unfortunately. But still, yeah. all, all their match wins have come from Game 3s. And even, like, talking with Toasty, he's like, you know, playing every Game 3 is kind of a blessing and a curse. We get more games and we get more pressure, but <laughs> it's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. You look at them. They're fourth place right now, but they actually have yeah. a losing game record. It's something yeah. funny that you notice going into the day. It, it, he put, uh, sorry, he didn't just say it's stressful. He said Omega stressful, which I, oh, okay. I get. Yeah, yeah it's, You it's, don't want to misquote the players. No, I, I can't. You know, I don't want to mi misrepresent anyone. Of course. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely never There's happened a big ever difference. before. difference. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they are eight and nine in game score uh, and three and three in series score. So they've lost one more game than they've won, even if their series best of threes overall are even. Yeah, uh, but a big part of that is like you're saying, they they always went to three games, wins yeah. or losses until that 0-2. I, I think it's kind of funny you mentioned that too, because like they're in fourth, right? Supernova's in third. They have a 73% win rate in their matches. And that's why I really feel like Supernova is, you know, a top three team uh, coming into this, like further away from the pack. Uh, in terms of FlyQuest and Maryville, but hey, I mean, it's a good chance for Fear to prove that, you know, they are a top half team and, you know, bring yeah, Supernova a little bit closer to them. Is, I think Fear quietly have, like, had a really solid split. I mean, I expected this roster to be middle of the pack and even the higher up part in the middle of the pack. It's been sloppy. Some of their games, like, they're over in 10 minutes or, you know, they make it over in 30 minutes. Some, I, you know, Fear is kind of a flippy team, but I think overall I've seen better looks from them, like more good looks than not. So it's definitely been fun to watch and have them. Nice look there from Faisal, dropping the equalizer down. Honestly, I was, you know, being a little critical of Chad and how tough it's been for him to find these ganks and actually make action happen. In the second half of this game, it's been just Supernova tracking him perfectly. Like they know where Chad is pretty much every time and are just avoiding the bear. I gotta be frustrated for Chad. He's like, man, I just want to press R on a turret. Just Ooh. let me do it, guys. I just, trust me, my champ's good. Let's see. Uh, I, I just noticed the horizon focus is done from Toasty. I, I, Ooh, I, two I'm, I'm thinking items at this point, because if you look at the dragon timer, we got about 90 seconds until Soul is on the map for Fear. Mountain Soul is big, too. I mean, Senna's going the Thality. Lee Sin's going the Thality. Rumble relies on some pen. Getting through a Mountain Soul when... And you've got Ahue and Kalista firing at you in the back line. Phillip's in trouble. Faisal, yet again, he's made this play thrice here. Using the rocket belt to just get on the Phillip. This time with the help of a Ray. Senna picks up a kill, and uh, Phillip's punished for a yeah. bit of mispositioning. I mean, I thought TF, and I, I think TF, should have advantage in the side lane. But uh, it props to Faisal. Like, he found a solo kill. He's kept this matchup really close. And uh, whenever he pops that rocket belt, it feels like he has some kill threat on the Phillip and the TF second time in a row now where you know last time we saw him uh pop the rocket belt he got the flash this time no flash on philip he gets the kill so fury will trade yeah. out the top outer but that's really nice for supernova because they can push up they took down the mid outer turret themselves and now they can reset after they just dropped the wards to maintain map control over this potential soul for fear really important that supernova is able to deny that by still getting that pick yeah. really made it easier for them to set up this fight now the one thing I'll say is that uh, Fear, I don't think they're too worried about it because of when the pick happened. They still have another 25 seconds yeah. here to set up the dragon. You can and see. they are still 2k gold ahead as they spend yeah. their gold. They can recover, but you have to use your sweepers in your own jungle now. So Supernova should uh, be able to keep River Pryo. As you can see, Fear fighting in, but now with mid, they should get this ward out of here. So it's a lot oh, tougher for Fear. fear. But, oh, fear. No, they're they caught. spotted out where Supernova was, or at least they guessed it. Equalizer goes down, but Kenby's in a lot of trouble. He's, He's completely split from the rest of the oh, team. No. Flash from Dabshin just locks him down. Kenby's going to fall. Supernova were trying to make a play on a Philip, but instead the walls are closing in. Fear, they read the play. That's really weird to me, because like Supernova found the pick. I was expecting them to team reset. But Kenby and Faisal stayed on the map. Faisal could have. He had the TP, right? He could have stayed there forever and TP'd back. Kenby stays, though. It's caught in a really awkward spot. And now, Fear, they're, they're trying to make their way into this dragon. You got to believe. 
They, they don't see Faisal. I think they're a little bit scared of that. He can just go for another engage. Oh, Damjin yeah. just gets bursted down. Chad jumping onto the back line, but Diamond is there to keep a ray safe over the wall. Diamond's tanking it up. Flashes away. Pulled back in. Toasty on a killing spree now. This way is doing a lot of damage and putting in a lot of work, but... I mean, Supernova bot time. Kenby's back on the map. He's running straight to this dragon. Can Fear burst it down fast enough? I think so. They have Can a Callista. They're going to flip this. Like, you have Callista Smite. You have gold cards. You have ways to keep Weeson out of the pit. Kenby does have vision. There's a ward in the pit. Kenby's not going for the jump over the wall. Instead, he's going to approach with the ray with Sochi. Jumps in there. It is secured by Lens. Now, can Kenby get out? Well, we know Sochi can't. Kenby's going to go down here as Toasty picks up a Benz. double kill. Fear's mid laner. Just doing everything for the team. Faisal got completely split out from everybody else. Not even sure how he made it over here, but Philip will say thank you very much for the revenge. That is Dragon's soul and a team fight win for Fear. I mean, this is turning out to be a great game from Fear. And I know that Toasty is the one participating in a lot of kills as the artillery mage in Hui, but it really feels like this game was ran through Daption and then games. As yeah. it really started with that 1v2 from Lens, then Daption found a roam timer to get Shochi behind mid. Chad was hovering Toasty to make sure he was able to get ahead of a lot of these lanes, and it's kind of emerged in the fact that Lens has been so big this game, it feels like every fight when Lens needed to step up, he does. This time around, it's just Callista plus Smite. They secure it. 1382. Kenby can't do anything against that. And then Lens, even though he positions himself, he gets kicked into a ray, and a ray is trying yep. to stick around. He can't do anything. Lens just mows him down to the back half. Uh, it's been a really, really nice game. was trying to spot yeah. Philip. He was marking Philip on the flank here. But there's no front line for the Syndra. There's no front line for the Senna with Diamond out of there. So they were just able to... I mean, Toasty and Lens just had a 2v2 for carries versus Shochi and Array, who are already lower health based on the previous scrap. So everything lands heads for fear. And they are in full control of this game. They get Baron after that play. They teleport up there. Yeah. That's both major objectives with Soul and Baron. I mean, we might be looking at the game end any time now. Oh, this is going to be a quick end. I, I think Fear played this out really clean. I, I really want to give credit over to Fear, their bot lane, the game plan. I, I think that just stacking dragons. I, I, whenever Dragon was up, they were there on time, right? They traded out Grubs for the first Drake. Second Drake, they opened up because Lens found a 1v2 and Daption found a great realm mid. Uh, I, I, it feels like all these dragons have been somewhat clinical. Kenby got caught for the last two. Kenby hasn't had his best game on the Lee Sin. Well, the bear definitely counterpick TF can help control it with a knot. No Merc Treads. Feels like, you know, Kenby might have tried to bite off a little bit too much. This Lee Sin pick. But, I mean, it's been solid from Yeah, it, early game did not work out for him. But yeah. if you're on Supernova side, you need to start thinking about what are your options still remaining. I still feel like their best strength is going to be a big team fight if they can group up and find that engage. But you need Diamond to stay alive long enough to buy space for Supernova because... Mm -hmm. Once he goes down, there's just nobody to stop Fear from running at Ooh. them. And they're taking a lot of damage here underneath their own turret, Toasty trying to prevent the siege from continuing. Yeah, the all from Toasty didn't connect. He's level 16, as Shoshi level 14 took a Q and lost two thirds of his health, because Huey is definitely a balanced champion that does, you know, not enough yeah. damage, of course. It's, it's yeah. new. Ooh, do ooh, there's that side lane that you're talking about, Philip taking advantage of the range advantage on the Faisal. Yeah. I, it's really tough now for Supernova. Like, I, I think, again, the game plan for them was to kind of absorb a fight and reset it, right? To turn it. You have the Senna Kench and Syndra Scatter to make sure that if Fear overcommits, you know, you hit a big scatter, and then you can turn the fight from there. We never really saw that happen. And again, I, I think that Daption and uh, Fear deserve a lot of credit because some of these engages they took, they were never just forced to split immediately. I, I could, could never really take a fight where it was 4v4, where they were fighting front to back and had something like a Cinder Scatter available to them to commit. Like that... Uh, fight mid, where Daption flashed in. Shochi was forced to retreat with Kenvi, and uh, people died on both sides of the fight. Like, that's just a really good take from Fear, uh, denying Supernova being able to stack up the way they want to and try and reset fights like that. So, uh, again, I, I think Fear deserve a lot of credit this game. It's, it's been a really controlled look from a team that, uh, you know, likes to play crazy. We saw a piece of that with a level one. They were actually able to recover from that and have a really nice game. A lot of it was around this bot lane. Doesn't show on the scoreboard, but I think they had a really big impact on this one. Yeah, Daption get on the map was huge, and ever since then, the team has been still playing through Toasty, like yeah. you had highlighted. Even Toasty's getting a lot of the kills, getting a lot of the kill participation. Shout out 11 out of 12 yeah. kills that he has been present for, but it really is the catalyst of other members around the map making those plays happen, and then Toasty stepping up in those moments. It's working for Fear. They're continuing the siege. They're cracking oh, every single Tier 2 turret, but now a play here 
on to Philip. As Flash available, but he is locked down. Array picks up the kill credit. That's nice. It's going to slow the Baron push here uh, as Look it's Faisal wrapped too. for fear. And Faisal will get an objective bounty. So. Wow. Yeah, I, I think that's... Uh, I mean, obviously, it's an oopsie from Philip, but good stuff yeah. for Supernova. Well, this is one of those moments. I mean, even in, in weeks past, I know we've talked with members of Supernova, and one of their greatest strengths that they see in themselves is their ability to trade something on the map. If you know what your opponent is trying to do on one side, what can we get done on the other? They're just giving up that Tier 2 top turret, but they get a pick mid, they get a turret bot side. Like, you can't just count Supernova out even if they're behind because they're always thinking about how to get back in. Yeah, I think that was a little bit too free as you're not quite connecting their sides and we'll buy enough time for Supernova to at least try and flip an Elder. You never know what happens when Elder flips. And uh, let's keep an eye on Shochi here, who is, you know, not too much gold away from a death cap. And given how death cap interacts with Syndra and that scaling passive, the AP ratio, that's a pretty it's big buy. So if it's Shochi up for the dragon, yeah, it won't be up for the 700 dragon. for that. And look at Toasty, three items completed yeah, with nine too. sacks on Mejai's. So there's a bit of a differential in what damage we can expect from the mid laners here. Gonna come down to execution for Shochi. Toasty doing a nice job with his range to make sure that control board goes over to Fear. So Fear will be able to hit the wave first. Should be able to get into this river, no problem. Ooh. If Shochi gets low. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Dabshin's looking for the engage. Doesn't quite land it, but now throws out the ultimate. Eaten by Diamond, trying to keep the mid laner alive. But here comes Chad, locking him down. There's the stun. Shochi flashes away. Faisal joining in. Fates call. Engage the on Faisal. Reset. He flashes. Supernova Whoa. are burning everything. There's to stay alive. Fear are using a lot to engage, but they're not using quite as much as Supernova have to do to stay on the map right nah, now. This so this is Elder though. Dragon fight's going to be a little easier for Fear. Yeah, this is good for Supernova. They have three alts to one. Toasty's the only person that has alts off. They were able to reset the fight. That's what Supernova wants to do now. Uh, they can actually turn if they can get in here. Actually, the equalizer is big. I'm happy you highlight yeah. that one because there it is. Already thrown down. Oh. No one's locked into it, but here's the engage onto the other side. Lens. Big kick. They got Lock. lens, but he flashes over the wall. He's still alive. And now it's Kenby that's in trouble instead. Philip untouched. You talked about the damage per second that ADTF can do. It's doing a lot right now. Faisal will at least get one onto Daption. Shochi snuck in the pit. Does not have the summoners to get out of there. Array and Diamond on one flank. Faisal on the other. Elder Dragon is the focus for fear, but their health bars are low. Philip's taking a lot of damage right here. Has to flash away. Array. One more auto should have him. Faisal. Faisal's on the flank. Fear are really just getting corralled Supernova. in the pit right now. It's Supernova looking oh. to take the fight. Now Lens no. focused down onto Hooray. That is the DPS. That is the damage down. That is a double kill. Make it a triple kill. Not quite. Chad will get the ace, but Fear will get the dragon. Honestly, I mean, that's how Supernova wants to play their comp, right? They did a really nice job of trying to stall things out. In the last part of the fight, Array got in a melee range to the Voldebear and got stunned up. Yeah. So that, I, I, it was actually looking okay. This angle, we're going to see another one. It's a good kick from Kennedy, but Lens was too close to the wall, so he was able to flash out and around. Ends up being really big from Lens, because the damage does in the back half of this, again, really significant, as Lens has another great fight. You can see uh, TF DPS in there. They're going to take Shochi out. That's important, but now... I mean, still, Supernova played this out nicely, right? It's a 3v4. They have some range. They have some damage. They force uh, Fear to pinch. It's really good pick on the fill-up, but just watch Ray in the back half. Any hopes of winning this right on him? And he gets way too close trying to clean up Philip, and Chad's just able to walk forward Q. Yeah. He goes down. Lens also just doing a really good job positioning there. Stays yeah. in the pit until he sees the window to go in. That's Elder Dragon. That's another Baron for Fear. On top of the Dragon Soul that they had earlier. So didn't end last time, but it was all the outer turrets cracked. I'm assuming that this time it'll be a different story. Fear have a 10k gold lead with yep. everything you could ask for to close out a game. I think Elder's going to be enough. There's no flash on any of the carries for Supernova. And Fear, I mean, they put a good game together. Like, that level one, they got set mm -hmm. behind. Chad was behind. I felt like Chad didn't have the map impact that you really want to have on this Voldebear, just given you know, he, it was a match clear where he was late to every play. But once, you know, Kenby went down, Chad really focused on getting these objectives, the dragon stacking. I think he made a couple, you know, nice fights. The grub fight was big when Lens was able to yep. find that 1v2 bot. Uh, so Chad was able to use some of the power of the Voldy there. And that's really all it needed. Like, Fear just put this together. It was map wide. As Kenby's going to look for another pick on the Philip, he gets around that ward. Oh, he's not spotted yet. Philip's going to walk up. 
Here it is. Dragon's Rage kick. They follow up. Good damage. Phillip's still alive for now, but Donnie Shadow will be enough to take him out. Chad, along with Aption, say, well, at least we'll get the enemy jungler for that. And Elder Dragon makes things all too easy. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Can Shochi get out? Oh, Diamond has to use the consume just to save the mid laner. That Elder Dragon burn would have been enough. Yeah, at least going to be the inhib falling, but still a trade's good, given you're down Elder and Baron at this point. Kenvi will be up to defend, has another ultimate. So I, I think that's a good play from Supernova. Whatever Fear was going to get here, they're probably going to get anyway, you know? Yeah. At least he gets something in response yeah. for Supernova, as they're going to just try and wait out the Elder Dragon before going for any kind of fight. Really dangerous to take a fight at those inhibs. It's better yep. to just let them go down, let the super minions funnel in. You still have one inhibitor in the bottom side to defend, and hopefully they don't have Elder Dragon for that one. I mean, I, I it sounds weird. I actually, I don't mind that at all from Supernova. If you're down Baron plus Elder and, and you manage to get them the base and keep it in the hit right. up, that, that's fine, actually. That's, I mean, we were just saying yeah, 10k gold lead, Dragon Soul, Elder Dragon, Baron buff. Like, Fear should have been able to end the game right there. The fact that we're still playing is good. And they, hey, they bought enough time for Shoshi to get a death cap, and Flash is going to be back up on the Supernova carries. So you never know. If a second Elder comes up, uh, that's really the flip that Supernova's hoping for. Fury have played this game out cautiously if they tried to close it out cleanly. And I, I, I really want to see them push hard for this. I like what Daption's doing right now, trying to just get vision control over this portion. Like, if anyone from Supernova overextends, they should not. Supernova should be relegated to their base by now. So. Adaption's tanky enough that if he gets yeah. engaged on, there'll be time for Philip to teleport in. There'll be time for people to answer, especially with lens in your back pocket with that Fates call. So now, if you are walking up with the remains of the Baron buff, if they can crack this final inhibitor, that's good news for them. Supernova will lose the turret, but can they make the fight oh. happen? Can we? With a huge play on the lens! Oh my god. Gets the god kick to maybe just save the game. They will survive, but right way. now will finally fall down. Diamond's taking a lot of damage. There's still so many items that Fear have over the opposition. Double kill to Toasty. It was a valiant effort from Kenby, but I don't think it's enough. That's a third inhib down, and Fear can continue to march these waves forward and look to end the game. Chad has used the ultimate, but he doesn't even need it to stop these turrets. They are melting like butter. And Spear just have too much of a lead right now. Supernova with three members left will try and defend it. Adaption to Chad front lining, scatter the weak onto Chad, but there's just not enough damage. Faisal's well get onto the back line. Toasty's in trouble, but he will not fall. Philip gets the kill. Fear win the fight, and Fear will take game one against Supernova. Great game from Fear. I mean, I, I think that Fear, when they're able to show control like that, I, I think that's a great sign. You know, we think of this team with Chad, it's like, hey, we're gonna play aggressive. We're gonna have level ones. We're gonna fight. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out there. And Fear were able to kind of go back to playing standard and able to find something that really worked for them well. Uh, I, I think that that's a really good sign from Fear. And man, props to Lens and Daption who really continue to step up. I know Toasty had the big score yeah. line. Toasty had a really nice game there, but I really feel like a lot of the plays were made around Lens and Daption stepping up, whether it was good engages. Lens finding the 1v2 or piloting some of those team fights really well. And Props to Tosi. You know, he got a lot of gold and at the end when Lens was taken out by a really good kick by Kennedy. Tosi was able to turn around that fight with Fear and pay off that gold tenfold. Team effort for Fear yeah. as they're able to take it on in game one and take down their opposition in Supernova who are still looking like one of the top teams in the league. We're going to send it to a short break before we are back for game two to see how the series shakes out. See you there. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long or a churro and probably not a pretzel either they also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable to which we said but we already made them and they are introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks get one at subway today Welcome to the 2024 Spring Split of the LCS Challengers League. This spring will feature 10 teams competing in a single round robin best of three format. And for the first time ever, we'll be implementing Fearless Drafts. If you're not familiar, Fearless Draft has a new twist to pick and ban. Once a champion is picked by a team in the series, it cannot be picked by them again. So if Team A drafts Teemo in Game 1, they cannot play Teemo for the rest of the series. Team B could pick Teemo in Game 2, but then wouldn't be able to play him in Game 3. And like LCS, all games will be played on the live patch, so you can take what you see from the games and try them out on your own. The top 8 teams from our regular season advance to the NACL playoffs, 
which will feature a double elimination bracket with a mix of best of three and best of five matches. Alongside the NACL are two qualifier tournaments, which will also feature fearless drafts on the live patch. The bottom two teams from the NACL regular season will compete against the top four teams from the qualifiers in a promotion tournament, battling in a double elimination bracket to qualify into the NACL in summer 2024. All LCS Challengers League games and coverage will be available on twitch.tv slash LCS underscore challengers with matches starting right after the LCS. And as a reminder, with team revenue shares, every sub in Twitch Prime directly supports the teams and players. Another split of Challengers League begins right now, and we can't wait to see you there.